everyone, I'm Brandon with Star Player One, and we are continuing on with Leviathan, the last day of the decade. Last time we left off, we got an extra clue that um, Mr. Christian, our guardian, who killed our mother, went with our mother to the archives. And at the archives, they did something there that we don't know about. But there should be documentation there that will tell us what they were doing there at the archives. And that's where we're off right now, so let's go! Back home, I guess. It's almost the end of the day. Boop. Click. Here we go. Oh. Hello. Oh. Hello, stranger. All of a stops in front of a skinny man with an angry, tired look. What? Um. Okay. All of her quickly leaves. Try not to look in the eyes of the stranger. The train doors are wide open. I think yellow steam... Let's go to the academy. I'm going to the academy station. I'll persist on the train car and the train starts moving. It's almost, it's already evening. I think we gotta go home. I think the longer we stay out, the more our guardian's gonna get upset with us. There's a lot of people we can talk to. It's a strong red door with a ring turned black with age instead of a handle. Voices and the clatter machinery are heard behind it. Been an underground service tunnel is behind a store. Are we going home? The old man was right. This is the archive. Oh, we're going straight to the archives then. I'm so close, I can smell it. Hello, sir. Profess Butterfly District Archives of the Ceteris District. Reference department stamps in. Oh, that's kind of a creepy little smile. Looks like an exam solver. And signatures. What the hell is going on today? It's either a nasty old woman wanted to put her late husband's damn house in her name, or some redneck hick, and now it's a peewee here. Just great. Darn it all. I'm going to take a piss or something. Just a minute. It's important. The line for important things is through the door over there, and it closes when you go through there. There's a draft. It closes when you go through there. There's a draft. Listen. Fess ignore all of her and grumbles about something. Hey, you. Hey you, listen to me. I have an urgent matter. I don't want to waste time arguing. Got it? Is that so? Calm down. If you start yelling here, you'll end up yelling in the street. So shut up and smile, please. Well, what is it? What's your question? Oh, yeah, that was the right choice. Some kind of contract was signed ten years ago in this building. Can I get a copy of it? No, you can't. Next! Wait, 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 wait. I need these papers to show... I need to see the agreement. Do they exist? If a transaction was agreed upon, then yes, they are sorted here. It is in the archives. Well, can I see the documents? Oh no! Who do you think you are? I said no, no. Get out of here. Next! What should I do now? Edna, what are you doing over there? All that for notice is Edna, I'm gonna call him. Master, I saw and heard everything. That fatty is just asking for a bean of his life. Shall I bite his tender flesh a couple times so he'll wise up? I don't know, Edna. He's a jerk, but... For a brief instant, the silhouette of the tree flashes before Oliver's eyes. I don't want to do him any harm. <laughs> You're surprisingly kind, sweetie. But if you want to know my opinion, spill a little blood wouldn't hurt anyone right now. That was basically a tree coming and saying, Hey, if you do that, that's going to be a point against you. So my lord, it's up to you. Tell me what to do. Let's make an offer. Let's make a deal with him. I'll go up and ask where he would want in exchange for access to the archives. Are you sure, sweetie? Wouldn't it be better to resort to rougher methods? I'm sure, Edna. Let me talk to him and find out what he wants. She disappears in a dissatisfaction. Uh, but, but, oh, you again. It's hot and a-holes are everywhere. Nothing but a-holes. Make a deal. Maybe we can check. make a deal. What do you want in exchange for full access to the archives? Hmm. Hmm. He taps his fingers as he thinks. It's something you have. All men have it. What is it? Uh, what is it? What? Are you joking? That old hag has been haunting my thoughts all day. Now you too? A photo, man. You know, spicy photos that show off your friends at school. Don't tell me you're ne you never taken one. Damn. So he wants an erotic photo. You understand, right? I get the photos, you get the archive and all the documents. So, Fatty wants some nude pictures. Where can I get them? Maybe I need to call some girls I know. 
I don't know how I feel about this. Can I go back here? The door with dark iron plates, the weak reddish light below that hits the window. I bet this room is where the visitors can see the documents. Great. Uh, let me, let me, let's check our contacts then. I have seven gold coins. I probably should stop spending them. Oh, this guy. Yes, yes, we know. I got his answer machine. I didn't mean to do it. But I will answer the riddle. I have never been, but I will be. I am unseen, but everywhere. I have no past, but I am the continuation of everything. Time. Oh, man. Okay. He's a master. I might miss him a bit. It's been years since I've seen him. I master. Oh, man. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Everyone's disappointed. Uh, after what we just had with Darina, uh, we try it. She's our friend. Wait a minute, Oliver. It's time to stop and tell yourself no. If I ask Darina for those photos, then the whole academy, all the learners, and half the Croatians will know about it. Oliver quickly hangs up. Makes sense. Our sister? That's kind of weird. Bro, speak quickly. I'm so tired. Jenny, listen, I have something that only you can help me with. Hmm? And? I'm sorry, I zoned out, bro. I never asked girls for something like this. But alas, I have no choice. Now or never. Jenny, I need photos of you. Huh? I mean, photos where you, you, photos where you are naked. What? Bro, are you kidding me? Why do you need such photos? Yeah, I would be a little skeptic too. <laughs> Jenny, I need it now. I have no time to explain. I'm just asking you to help me, please. Suddenly, okay, I'll send you your phone right now. Thank you, Jenny. Suddenly, no problem. Her sister hangs up. A picture was sent to Oliver's phone. That's a weird family. I was kind of worried about how uh, quickly she agreed to that. So, okay, fine, here's a new photo of me. Okay, there he is. Got the photos? I got them. Here, take a look. He looks, takes out his telephone out of his hand. Wow, what a nice blood. <laughs> He's a redhead? I like redhead. It's a she. That's my sister. He's a redhead. Hey, wait, wait, this is a girl? Yes, it's a girl. He's seven you photos of naked girls. Looking at his lips, girls. Darn, I should have known. I need different pics, young man. Got it? Got it. Wait just a little bit. I'll get you what you want. Oh. Oh, he wants pictures of dudes. I mean, that's fine. That's your preference and all. <laughs> uh, just take a little pick down below. I guess I'll call Kale. Hello, I've been waiting for you to call me. Did you find anything? Yes, Kel, and I'm just a stone story away from the truth. That's incredible, buddy. I always knew that you would make a great inquirer. Maybe we could work in the bureau together. I could talk to my father, and after you finish academy, you... Kel, there's one problem. Don't tell me that you lost the scent, bloodhound. Listen, it's hard for me to ask you this, but... I just... I need a picture of you where you're... Kind of naked. Oh. Oh, Oliver. Wait, why didn't you tell me earlier? Kill, there wasn't any time. I understand, but you could just you could talk to me about <laughs> you could not talk to me anytime about coming out. It's not what you think! I'm a womanizer! My guy's he's flirting with all the women. Or were you afraid that I would take it the wrong way? Kale! Ah, uh, Kale, you don't understand. Someone else wants those kind of pictures and you're the only one who can help me. Oh, that's it. Alright, just tell me, do you need it for the investigation? Yes. Okay. Oliver, I I get. Wait a minute, I'll send you the pictures. Kale hangs up without saying goodbye. Oliver receives photos on his phone. Oh, uh, this is weird. I, it's weird how they just just give those photos out. Like, I don't think I could ever do that to any of my friends and be like, hey, I need a new, new photo of you. <laughs> They'll probably be like, um, this is where the friendship ends, unfortunately. Oh, uh, you're making my eyes start to hurt, man. I hope you have what I asked for. I got them. Enjoy them, you pervert. He takes the phone out. Oh, yes, that's it. Licking his lips. Oh, wait right here, man. I need to go upstairs and get some papers. He returns a few minutes later. Well, what did you need? 
He wipes his hand on his clothes distractingly. I asked you for access to the archives. I also need the documents that I requested. Yes, as you wish. See that room over there? Go. Go in, sit down, and wait. I'll come and bring you whatever you need. Oh, and take your phone. Um, you can have my phone back. I, I don't like this. I didn't like it at all. Alfred goes to the door and reaches for the handle. It's already quite late. My guardian is starting to worry now. I have to finish my business here as soon as possible. I'll go in this room and won't leave until I find all the evidence I need. Let's go. I pull all the decides to sleep, pulls on the door and enters the room. Okay, listen carefully and don't say anything. Some of the best documents in this archive are far more or older than four no, four hundred years old. Or more. But if I remember correctly, you said documents you need is less than fifty years old. That's what will make it easier to find. Your document is stored alphabetically. So if you need a document about the Nickelbergs and ask for documents to start with the N. Got it? Yeah, go on. I'll bring one folder at a time. I'm not a slave and I won't haul a ton of papers for you. It goes against union rules too. If you need anything, knock on the door and I'll come help you. Understand, or do I need to repeat what I just said? I got it. You only can bring me one document and I can't be constantly pressed on you. Alright, thanks Levi. Oh, thank Levi then you only look dumb. You get it. You're not, as, you're not really an idiot. If you need anything, knock on the door and I'll come. Okay, I'll be in the hall. There will be a long line of annoying people waiting. Quietly, they're all hags. I can't stand them. Quiet clucking is heard behind the bars. Is that a chicken? That's impossible. What's the chicken down doing in the archives? All of her stands near the bar. Take a quicker, closer look. I peer into the darkness behind the bars. I don't see a darn thing, but it sounds like a chicken is here. He stands near the bars. Okay. I look at the darkness for some time, but see nothing. Oliver goes away. Okay, I guess I get my documents now. Oliver knocks on the door. You need something. I can bring you some documents. Any documents you want. Just choose... A letter. It is an alphabetical order, you know. Documents are sorted by last names to make them easier to find. Oh no, what's his last name? I don't remember. Oh my god. A for G. Last name sort of A for G. Looks like you don't know the alphabet very well. Everybody's a comedian. You realize there are documents for every letter, don't you? So A, B, C, which I bring you. I need to look up what other letters are in this section. D, E, or G. What do you need? D. Documents are in D if you'd be so kind. He goes and gets the documents. After a while, he comes back with a pile of papers. Here's a dusty Kremlin from the Dalston family as well, a pile of trash. I don't know what they're doing in the archives. Okay, um... I need to see what his last name is. Okay... Come on, there has to be something. A clue. Yes, what... My guardian's coat of arms, what is it? Nope. Uh, you all know it too. You're like, it's so obvious. Give me a break. Oh, that's our sister. Sending us photos. <laughs> and I... Can I call my guardian? What should I call mother? Sorry, I'm not reading it. I'm just trying to. Wait, I think he just said it. I think it's K. Long beef, smother, and tell me this fate. He has never come. No, that's the name of that place we're in. I don't remember who our guy is. I, I can't go and just ask. Constantly search. There has to be something here. Something I'm not. Let's call Kale. Oh, I can't. Uh, is that a log? I will save because I have yet to do that. 
<laughs> I had not done that since we started. Alright, accent. Oh, jeez. I need a name. I don't know! HR. Hmm. R. Raiders, Carmines. Jeez, I just. When you guys down. Mm. Okay. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> Sorry, that took me a while. I find out. I finally found out what the name is. <laughs> it's Orvud. Are you? In, oh. And that was not the letter I need. Okay. If not, it might be my last name too. I just looked up what his name was because I, for the life, could not remember me. Okay, he goes and gets the documents. After a while, he comes back with a pile of papers. Okay, oh, auto, auto, order, families, Waldo, skip that. Here it is. Orvard. Yep. I have to see if there's anything important to investigate. There's a large book in the folder with pretentious names, dedications of undedicated, the Orvard family curse, and here's document labeled sales agreement. Gotcha. It looks like the book was printed using Orvard printed paper, printed press. The Orvard crest is embossed on the front cover. Let's see what it says. In this world, there are a few that always cultivate knowledge that are available to only a few, even if they are not kept a secret. The story you read are such words. Keep them to yourselves. Once upon a time, when the dawn's light had just risen over the Leviathan, and the temple of every god was just built, our first patriarch, Austin Orvud, approached the Cohen of the temple. He asked Cohens to give him secret power. He played night and day, promised them a great reward, and the Cohens consented. Unknown to the people, a ritual was to form. Austin Orva drank the boiling blood of the live in itself, and a shadow was born from its whirl in darkness. A shadow was born from the darkness? Really? What does that even mean? Our patriarch lived in the temple many years, and he left, completely a, different per he left a completely different person. When he returned, Austin gathered members of every family to the house and made them drink his blood. All who drank of the patriarch's blood gained a secret power, some of the power that Austin received in the temple. Protectors appeared behind... Their backs, half demon shadows, they exposed the dark sides of their master's soul. That's what we saw. The guy was in there and we saw his shadow. From the moment on, families would ascend dramatically on only to experience a terrible downfall soon after. The Cohen's were faithful. The Orvards received the power of the patriarch they have asked for, but the power at what by what price? It turned out that the slowly the shadows started to cloud their master's mind. They would whisper terrible things by will and a bit about being mighty, filling rivers of blood, and ruining all creatures. Really. The Orvards slowly went mad, and all the pa and the Patriarch was more was more so than anyone. The Orvards started a war against other families, trying to take power from themselves. The bloody uprising lasted for seven years until finally the Orvards were defeated. Austin Orvard was beheaded at the foot of the tower. The whole family was overthrown, and at the foot of the tower, at the foot of the tower, the Orvards were thrown out of the council, expelled, and cursed. Of all the great families, only one was not afraid to lend a helping hand to the outcasts, the Bly family that came to the fallen family's defense and made Orvud their vassals. The Blys and the Orvuds are, now, are even now connected to this day. We remember the service rendered to our family. The temporary alliance became a powerful unit that has strengthened since the war. After almost 300 years, the Orvuds were able to return to the chamber of the council. The cautionary tale of the shadows finally became no more than a story. Or is it? There are dozens of pages more to talk about, mutual relationships between the Brys and the Orvuds. It seems like I learned something important. Orvuds has some kind of shadow, a demon-like creature that he inherited. I'm thinking th that that night my mother was killed. I always remember that there was two killers. But now everything has fallen into place. Orvud wasn't alone that night. He came with a shadow. Oliver notices a brown bag filled with paper mixed in with the documents. He opens the bag and the documents and newspaper clippings fall out of it. Otto claims that his lost son was strangled. Hmm, what's this for? The only heir to the Kraftwerk family was found dead. 
Here are some more names. The document talks about some children. Otto? Kraftberg? I don't understand what relationship Orvard has with these documents. Otto opens the bag and some documents and newspaper clippings fall out of it. Okay, we saw this. This document has been has been notarized signature of three people and it's stamped a few times. The first sheet of paper says sales agreement. It says Christian Paul Overward, party of the first part, and Sherry Hirschen Vertran, party of the second. Sherry Hirschbald, obviously that's my mother's maiden name. Next, the object the object of transaction is the right to to adopt Oliver Vertran, the son of Roger Vertran and Sherry Vertran Hirschblan. What? They were having an agreement to adopt him? So she- my mother just sold me to my guardian! I didn't expect that! But why did he kill her? What did he have to hide if the transaction was legal? I guess I don't know a lot about my mother. Maybe there's something else written about this in the documents. Okay. Maybe I gotta look at her name. Hirschblan. Or Vertran. We'll look at Vertran and we'll look at Hirschblan. Yeah, yep, 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 skip. Alright. Bertrand. All our letters. I want to see my family history now. Bertrand! You can just spend days just reading this. He goes and gets the documents. He brings the folder documents and a strange, bulky app apparatus. What did Profess bring me this time? Scrolls to the official Winsman seal, a dusty book entitled The Winsman and Their Legacy, and some weird apparatus. Vernstein. Ver. Vertran. The Vertran documents are inside a large box of thick sides. After opening the box, Oliver discovers promissory notes and some sort of notice. A strange apparatus is also labeled Vertran. Usually, I would stop the episode here because we're at that time limit, but since I took some time to find out what the archive is, I'm going to extend it maybe two minutes just for you guys. I just study everything that's in the box. There might be something important. Gotcha. Oliver notices a large note of promissory notes with a gold bank ribbon. Loan of 2200 due, blah blah, loan of 3850 3, gold due by May 14. And here's postscripts written by father, I will pay by. Based on these documents, my family was in debt. A lot of debt. I remember my mother suffered as she saw her family getting poorer. She tried the best she could, but our family has too many expenses. I think my father disappeared and everything became so depressing. Here are several identical scrolls made of thick gray paper. Each one is written with blurred letters that says, Notice of Death. Notice of Death? About what? whose death? Mother's? It says, Hunter does not notify Sherry Bertrand of death of her husband and Hunter, Roger Bertrand. <gasps> Our dad died. Dad, so you're dead. Something else is written here. Day and time of death. July 17, 1578, between 10 and 11 o'clock in the morning. My mother was killed near the end of August 1578. That means my mother may have known about... That means mother may have known about my father's death. Okay, what What if she really knew? What if she behaved strangely to try and hide the truth from me? If that's true, then I can't imagine how she's kept going. Next line. Cause of death. Suicide. Suicide? I don't believe that my dad would take his own life. You have to be pretty desperate to kill yourself. Did it just have to do with my family's debt? There's more. Notice there was no chance to revive R. Vertran due to the nature of his injuries. He died within two minutes from blood loss. Father, what happened? Let's get this apparatus. Oliver holds a strange device in his hand. It has several thin tubes, reflective lenses, and mirrors on it. What is this? Yeah. Yep. Okay, we need about that. I mean, yep. Keep going. Yep. 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 Here we are going through that again. Turn back my eye. Did I read these documents? I think I did. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we're doing this. Skip. All right. Where did that? It's the rank notes saying we're dead. All right. And then I will end it there. Sorry it took me a little while. I just My brain just went blank there and I could not remember his name for the life of me. If you liked what we're doing so far here at Star Player One, like, comment, and subscribe it down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next Star Player One video. Bye!